In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. What a true blessing it is for us as Catholics to be members of the one true Church, in which has the access to the most important sacrament of them all, the Most Holy Eucharist. It is through this sacrament that those in sanctifying grace are given the strength to overcome sin and temptations, since the true presence of Christ brings forth strength and grace within the soul. This is because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, and which was created by God to respond to holiness by obeying His will. Thus we were made in His image, just as the divinity of Christ was viewed under His flesh. It is also through the Blessed Sacrament that His body, blood, soul, and divinity are viewed under the appearances of bread and wine, according to the human eye. It is through the Blessed Sacrament that we are able to physically be in the presence of our King, our Sovereign Lord Jesus Christ, whom is all good and deserving of our love. St. Teresa of Lisieux, doctor and mother of the Church, has stated, and I quote, Do you realize that Jesus is there in the tabernacle especially for you? For you alone? Remember this, for you alone. She continues, and I quote, He burns with the desire to come into your heart. Don't listen to the demon, laugh at him, and go without fear to receive the Jesus of peace and love. The gust of our soul knows our misery. He comes to find an empty tent within us, which is all he asks of us. End quote. Sadly, in our times, my brothers and sisters, 70% of those who identify as Catholic have lost a reverence and respect for the real presence. Not only because of the sacrilegious receptions of Holy Communion and mortal sin, which is against 1 Corinthians 11 verse 27, but because of the very fact that they reject Catholic doctrine and dogma, that the Eucharist is the very body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. This even goes back to the times when Jesus preached on the true presence of the Blessed Sacrament, and many disciples have abandoned him due to this very teaching, and this could be found in John 6 verse 66. Our blessed Lord then humbly and mercifully asked his apostles, Will you leave me too? What great sorrow it brings to our Lord that many no longer believe in his true presence, which is only a privilege and not a right to any human being whatsoever. Many of the early Christians would die for this very mystery, such as St. Tarkasus, who was a Christian in the second century, which is the very times that Christians were persecuted by the anti-Christian pagan Rome, the anti-Christian pagan Roman Empire, which would persecute Christians and throw them into dungeons just to watch them starve, or to put them in coliseums and watch them being eaten by lions for the sake of martyrdom for the Christian faith, for the Holy Catholic faith, for professing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior rather than professing a pagan god, Caesar. At the persecution, as they arose within the Roman Empire, the pagan Roman Empire, Christians were forced to hide underground in small tunnels for the dead, called catacombs, in which were the very places the holy sacrifice of the Mass was celebrated by the local bishop, since the early Christians could obviously not gather in public, but rather they gathered in these, in these very places. Now going back to St. Tarkasus, little St. Tarkasus, whom was an orphan, happened to be one of these faithful Christians who would gather in these catacombs, who had a great devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, a very strong devotion rather. Since these were dark times in which the priest could not distribute the Blessed Sacrament to those who were in the prisons at the time, as a result of persecution for being a Christian, the local bishop has asked the faithful after Mass, the question of whom would be willing to risk their life to bring the Blessed Sacrament to those in prison. Even though three men have offered to bring the Blessed Sacrament to those in prison, little young St. Tarkasus, whom was an acolyte, personally accepted the task, and which was resulted, and which later resulted in the bishop excusing his request to do so since he was so young. However, since little T St. Tarkasus kept begging the bishop and stated to him, and I quote, 
I am so young. The pagans will think I am only a messenger boy and will let me pass. The bishop later gave permission due to his great devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. Now, my brothers and sisters, how many of us will be willing to do such a thing, such a holy and virtuous act? Many of us are so scared to even proclaim the Catholic faith in public because of the persecutions of those who seem us, see us as different. We're so scared of being different. We're so scared of professing the truth because we're afraid of what people may think of us. I'm going to continue. After he was given permission to bring the Holy Communion, the Holy Blessed Sacrament, to those who were in prison, he later placed several hosts inside a white lining cloth, which was later placed in a little case, which Tarkasus put inside his tunic, just over his heart. He has such a great devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. And within his tunic, he placed his two hands over the sacred burden. He stated off, O oh, dear Lord, Jesus Christ, how I love thee, he whispered, how good thou art to choose me as thy little messenger, how, willing, how willingly I would suffer and die for thee, like these good people in prison. Perhaps one day thou wilt let me lay down my life for thee too. End quote. As he left the catacombs, he later ran into a group of kids who were playing a game, and they requested that he join them. But he refused and replied, I am sorry, but I am on an important mission. I am on an important message. They later noticed he was guarding something next to his heart, and later became suspicious, and tried pulling his arms away since he refused to tell them what he was hiding. The more he refused to budge and to give in, the more aggressive the boys were towards him, and they began to severely beat him. As he was beaten, he whispered, Jesus, strengthen me. Jesus, strengthen me. One of the children beaten him, heard him whisper these very words, and they cried out, He's a Christian. He is hiding some Christian mystery. He is hiding some kind of Christian mystery there. End quote. As they began beating him, as they continued beating him, a man passing by the children asked, What was the matter? The boy replied, He is a Christian carrying some Christian mystery, and we're trying to get it from him. So the man replied, A Christian, you say? And then he later gave Tarkasus a cruel blow, which later made him fall to the ground. Tarkasus did not give in, and at this very moment, a soldier coming towards the group scattered the boys and the man right to left, and stopping them, lifted Tarkasus in his arms, stating, and I quote, You cowards! All setting on a little lamb. And he strode quickly down the street, and hurled off into a quiet lane. He stated to Tarkasus, Tarkasus, lad, he said, smoothing back the curls from his pale face. Tarkasus opened his eyes and recognized the soldier as a Christian whom he met in the catacombs. I am dying, he stated, but I have kept my God safe from them. And he handed the precious treasure to the soldier who placed it reverently inside his tunic. Carry him to the prison for me, said Tarkasus. And with a gentle sigh, he fell back into the soldier's arms. He later died. His little soul already was with God, for whom he so willingly had given his life for. Jesus himself, who once said, Greater love than them. Greater love than this no man has, than that a man who laid down his life for his friend. Little Saint Tarkasus later gave his life 
for the friend of friends, Jesus Christ. Now recently at the Papal Mass of Pope Francis on January the 16th of 2015, outside of the cathedral, the Manila Cathedral, there was during the times of the reception of the Blessed Sacrament, a huge sacrilegious act that was taken place by extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. Or should I say, quote unquote, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, which is something I reject. This abuse was also carried out throughout the crowd. The Blessed Sacrament was dispensed to those within the crowd and then passed backwards from hand to hand and broken into pieces, which according to those who were eyewitnesses, who were physically there, have reported, has reported that later the hosts have fell into the mud, which you can come to the conclusion was later trampled upon. You can now see why we as faithful Catholics are against the very practice of reception of Holy Communion in the hand. Because sadly, things like this, which has occurred at this Papal Mass, occur. This practice is an absolute mockery of those who are martyred for the Blessed Sacrament. And to our very Lord's words, Amen, I Amen, I say to you, Moses gave you not bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give you is my flesh for the life of the world. End quote. I ask all of you to say the prayer that I recite at every single Mass that I have put together. And it goes like this, Lord, have mercy on those who do, not have, who do not have devotion to Thee in the Blessed Sacrament. Save souls. Amen. St. Tarkasis, ora pro nobis, in nomine Patris, e Filii, e Spiritus Sancti. Amen.